Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk about the small environment that I've been working on so far. I've been putting it together piece by piece and now it's starting to take shape. Um, the goal for this environment is to create something small, something affordable, and something very functional. I got a solid starting point for building and experimenting with different projects. So in today's video, I want to kind of talk about what it looks like so far and how much everything costs. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing on the list that we're gonna talk about is the rack. So the rack is the Vivor, uh, I think it's pronounced Vivor. So <laughs> Vivor 12U Open Frame Server Rack. It is very small, it is very compact, and it's very affordable. It fits on the corner perfectly. The depth is adjustable from 23 to 40 inches, which kind of gives me a lot of flexibility when mounting different gears. So if I do decide to get a mini server later on down the line, I can adjust the depth to fit it. Also, I do have a server at home in my uh, home lab <laughs> at home. Um, I've actually been thinking about taking that server and bringing it here for a lot of reasons, but it's something I'm still thinking about. So if I do decide to do something like that, one of the reasons why I decided to get this particular rack is because the depth is adjustable, so I can adjust that to fit that so the server can fit perfectly in this, um, in this rack. Once everything is put together, the frame felt really sturdy. You can either mount it on the wall or you can just have it sit on the corner like I do. And it has wheels on it as well, so it's easy to move around. And that kind of helps a lot. Assembly was pretty simple and very straightforward. It also comes with two tray, which is just the right amount for my setup right now. The bottom tray uh, is a little bit uh, thicker and then the top tray is a little bit lighter. So the lighter stuff on the top and, and the heavier stuff on the bottom. And it's perfect right now for me because I don't have that much stuff yet in this environment. Uh, but eventually things might grow, but for now, um, those two trays are perfect and you can also buy more tray if you need to and add it to the rack But for me right now those two trays are exactly what I need overall for the price I think it's a great option if you build on a small home lab and need something that's budget-friendly to organize your network equipment and server gear it's perfect, it gets the job done. And also I think what I like, what I love about it as well is that it's adjustable. So if I was to get a server, like I said earlier, I can just adjust it to fit that and I don't have to buy something new or if I decide I wanna bring my server um, from my house to here, um, I can bring that over and just adjust things and it fits perfectly. So all in all, great server rack, very simple, very inexpensive and it does what it's supposed to do. So I like it. Next up is the firewall. I'm using OpenSense and I have it installed on the Zimobot 832. I actually made a video about the device and the OpenSense installation process. So I'll make sure I link that in the description if you do wanna see it. The idea behind the firewall is to add an extra layer of protection to this environment. Since I'll be doing a lot of building, testing out different application and making all kinds of configuration changes, it's important to have something in place that can help segment the network and give me a little bit more control. It's also a good way for me to explore and learn some new concept around network security beyond what I already know about firewalls. The board cost around $217, which is not that bad at all. It seems to be handled in OpenSense fine so far, but if I run into any issues, I'll be sure to make a video about it for sure. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't necessarily need the physical hardware. Um, you can virtualize OpenSense if you have something like Proxmox installed in your lab environment. But for me, I just need that physical aspect to it. I just wanted something uh, small, physical, that is dedicated for the firewall. Um, so everything is separated in a way. But again, if you don't feel like you need the, the, the hardware device like the Zimmer board, you can virtualize it and set things up and you should be good to go. Next up is the switch. For the switch, I'm using a TP-Link switch. Uh, this is the TLSG10PE, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it's an eight port gigabit POE switch. It's part of TP-Link's Easy Smart Manage series which gives me just enough control. Four of the eight ports support power over ethernet, which is super convenient if I ever need to, let's say, pawn a device like an access point that I have connected to it. I do have an access point connected to it right now, but it's not PoE. Or maybe if I want to, let's say, set up cameras without running any separate power cable in the future, I'm able to do that with a small device that is not too crazy and it's perfect for this environment. It also supports VLAN and QoS and a few other future for better network management and segmentation, easier for a small lab setup like I have here. For what I'm doing, it strike a nice balance between functionality and simplicity. 
I don't need something overly complicated right now. I just need something simple that works because again, my focus is on building uh, and configuring and setting up application, not so much on the hardware part of things. I don't want to go too crazy on the hardware. So for right now, this switch works perfect to strike the right balance between simplicity and functionality. It costs about $60, which is very affordable. I think it's a solid choice if you're looking for something budget friendly or just enough smart feature for a home lab. All right, so next up I have the Slate AX. This is a small travel router. And right now I'm using it as the wireless access point to push out Wi-Fi for this environment. Man, this little device is packed with a lot of future. I honestly don't think that I can do it justice in this video. It probably deserved like a dedicated video on its own. So I had it laying around and I didn't feel like buying a new access point. So I decided to just put it to good use here. <laughs> and honestly, to be honest, using it as a wireless access point is just one of the many things, many things this thing can handle. It costs about $100 depending on when or where you buy it. It support Wi-Fi 6, it's compact, it's lightweight, and it's super portable, perfect for travel or even a quick lab setup on the go. But like I said, I really don't want to undersell or undermine this device. It's a powerful little router, but for now, in this build, I'm just using it as a wireless access point until, well, I outgrow it or decided to get an actual wireless access point. But I'm telling you, this device is really good. I might just make a video about it to kind of dive a little bit deeper into it. It's a really good device. And last but not least, is the brain of the lab. And this is the Aerostar WTR Pro. I did an initial review of this device and I also walked through the process of installing TrueNAS on it. I'll drop the link to that video in the description box below if any of you guys wanna check it out. It costs around $609 for the device and that include AMD Ryzen 7, 64 gigs of RAM and one TB SSD. I did upgrade it a little bit, so I added two SSD, one of which was around $90 and then the other one was around $75, $76 to round it up. I also picked up four 10 TB HDD uh, for storage, which cost around $800 in total. So everything included, the device and everything else in the device cost around $1,575, which in my opinion is not bad. Like I said, I do have TrueNAS installed on it and it's been running great so far. Um, this is where of course most of the services and projects are going to leave. Um, I've played around with the virtualization feature. It works great, but it's uh, it's definitely not on the same level as something like Proxmox. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually considering getting a separate box just for virtualization, but that's something that I will decide later on because again, I truly want to kind of dive into it, set things up, and hit a limitation. Because one of the things that I want to do for this environment is that I don't just want to change things because I feel like I want to change things. I want to actually test things and see, hey, there's some sort of hardware limitation or there's some sort of limitation that I'm running into in here that I cannot pass. And then I'll be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to have this box be dedicated for just storage and container. And then probably I'll set up a different box for virtualization and Proxmox will be installed in that box. But until I reach that point, I actually do want to test this first uh, before I get to do that. So for now, the Aerostar WTR Pro with TrueNAS installed in it is, uh, is solid. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And like I said, this is where most of the application and building is going to happen. So until I start building and testing and running through issues, I'm not gonna add anything yet to the environment. I'm just gonna just test things until I run into issues. Then I will kind of go from there. But for now, it's perfect and it's working the way it's supposed to work. So the total cost is about $2,100. So this includes things like cables as well. And honestly, it's not that bad. Most of the money was spent on the Aerostar WTR Pro and rightfully so. Um, it's built so that it can last me for a while 
and the price is within my budget. And honestly, you can cut back on a whole bunch of stuff if you want to scale back that price a little bit. So instead of getting maybe like 10 TB HDD drive, you can get maybe one TB or two TB, depending on what you're trying to do, right? And also instead of getting one TB SSD, the two extra SSD that I got for, uh, for the AOSTAR WTI Pro, you can cut back, maybe get 500 gig instead of one TB. So you can cut back things to have it fit your budget. The goal with this setup isn't to build some crazy expensive environment. I just wanted to start with something small and affordable, enough to get things going. Um, I'll build, experiment, and learn new things in this environment. And if I run into issues or limitation down the line, then I'll know it's time to upgrade things. I'm not trying to chase the biggest and most powerful hardware out there right now. My focus is on creating something practical that helps me achieve what I'm trying to build and learn. And for what I'm trying to do right now, this setup is perfect. And again, if you feel like you need something that's a lot cheaper, you don't have to buy a 10 gig HDD. You can scale down, maybe buy four, maybe buy one gig HDD and just start from there. There are a few things that you can scale down on. And again, as I said earlier, you don't necessarily need a physical firewall. You can virtualize that firewall. So you can have something like the Aerostat WTI Pro, which I think it's a really good device. You can install Proxmox on it and virtualize a whole bunch of other things like TrueNAS and then virtualize your firewall. So you have one central device with everything on it. Now, that's having all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak. But if you want something affordable, that's a great place to start. And for me, again, as I said, the idea is not to chase this crazy thing that everybody seems to chase on YouTube, because nowadays when you look at, <laughs> when you look at uh, home labs on YouTube, it seems as if it's almost impossible to get started on it. And that's not what I'm trying to chase here. The idea here is to build on this and hit a limitation and then grow from there. That's pretty much all I have for you guys today, guys. Now the building started, we have things up and running. I have so much things that I have to work on, both for school um, and for other things. So I have a lot more videos coming out in regards to building things on this stuff that we just set up. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video. You're welcome to ask me any question, just hit the comment box below. I'll try my very best to answer the questions that you guys have, but as always, don't forget to stay geeking. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.